Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael. Today is a special occasion, and we begin by extending happy Valentine's Day greetings to all of you loyal viewers. But today is also a special day for Across the Fence. In fact, you're witnessing a broadcasting milestone. Today is our 65th birthday. Thanks to your interest and support and the commitment of University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV, this is the longest running program of its kind in the entire country. In fact, since our debut, there have now been more than 16,000 episodes. One of the only remaining tangible signs from the early years of Across the Fence is this memorandum. It was written by the founder of WCAX-TV, Stuart Martin. He authorized the launch of Across the Fence beginning February 14, 1955. Now there are some additional photos and slides that help trace the history of Across the Fence, but the real story of this program is found in the people. The Extension Service of the University of Vermont presents your daily farm and home program, Across the Fence. Extension Service and Experiment Station of the University of Vermont present your daily farm and home program, Across the Fence. I took over after Lloyd Williams. It was in 1956, in the summer of 1956. And uh, the studio was in an old warehouse overlooking Winooski River. And the only access to the studio was through the secretary's office. We had black and white television only. And the only visuals we used were black and white, a 16 millimeter film that I had to shoot out in the field. And Polaroid black and white pictures that we mounted on flip cards and put the camera on the flip card and then flipped one card after the other. Amazing. These were the two visuals we used. We trained as needs, as needs were. I don't think we did enough training, but you know, we were all new, we had never, we had never been on television before, and uh, it came out, and very, very quickly, we had about four or five specialists who really took on and who were really, really appreciated by the audience. Those early days of Across the Fence are preserved in photographs only. The programs were done live, over the air. When the program featured animals, well, the animals were brought in live. If something went wrong, it went wrong. And uh, yeah, we had, uh, you know, we, once we had a bird in the studio and with our uh, bird specialist and uh, it was a little parakeet and he was sitting on, we were rehearsing and the bird sat on the top of his hand and just one minute before we went on the air, the bird just took off and flew up. <laughs> we did a 50 minute ah. program about birds without the bird. Christensen brought Tony Adams to the broadcast and Tony served as host until his retirement in 2004. I did it, what, for 35, 40 years? Across the Fence is unique because it's different every day. We'll have a politician in one day, we'll have an author in one day, we'll have uh, four ace youngsters in, we'll have uh, agronomists, whatever you people came up with. I enjoyed it because it was different every day. I look forward to doing it that way, you know? Nice to have you with us once again for another edition of Across the Fence. I tried to make people feel that we were talking one-on-one -on -one with your chair here and my chair there without a camera. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Tony. Across the Fence means Vermont. It is uniquely Vermont, and I think people know that, and they accept it as you have a guy from Shoreham up, or you've got a guy from Brattleboro up who's unique, who's done something that's of interest to people out there. The interest with people is the important thing with Across the Fence, I think. Hello, I'm Lynn Jarvis, and today... Tony worked closely with Lynn Jarvis, who came on as program producer in the 1970s. Lynn retired in 2002, but continued to contribute to Across the Fence until his passing in 2018. I began my television career in 1969 as a producer director for Vermont Public Television, and one of my jobs was directing Consumer Hotline that was produced by UVM Extension's Karen Christensen. 
when she retired in 1975, I was hired as producer of Across the Fence in 27 very happy and creative years that are still going strong, thanks to Will Michael, who asked me to be a contributing editor, for which I am most grateful. Good afternoon, I'm Howard Coffin. With the Vermonters Fence. still do things We're differently. Here. They say things differently, they think a little differently, and they still are deeply interested in what happens within their state. They want to know what's going on here because they're proud of what's going on here and they want to be up to date with what's going on in Vermont. And one of the best ways to keep abreast of what's going on is to turn on across the fence. It helps to make you more of a Vermonter. In 2015, for the program's 60th anniversary, our U.S. Senators took notice. I look to Across the Fence as a source of information from my time as a prosecutor in Vermont to my work now in the United States Senate. It gives a voice to the local dairy farmer, but it's grounded in our history and our Vermont lifestyle. It spotlights our caregivers and our educators and our community organizations here in Vermont. Across the Fence is the longest running locally produced program in the nation for just those reasons. It speaks to the spirit of who we are as Vermonters. It's been a reliable source of information for three generations. Across the Fence routinely addresses concerns of Vermont communities, families, businesses, and farmers. The show is unique to Vermont and demonstrates UVM Extension's commitment to education. Across the Fence showcases the hard work, the dedication, and the hands-on learning experiences of thousands of Vermont youth in 4-H to community service organizations like the United Way, the Boys and Girls Clubs, and our schools by highlighting music and art theater, and technology groups. You leave a legacy uh, that can't be replaced. Uh, a year ago, we celebrated the retirement of another longtime host. It's been an absolutely impossible to sum up my career here at Across the Fence and what all of you in Extension and at WCX mean to me. i um, been able to meet and talk with so many extraordinary people of all ages, and I feel blessed that I could host this program for all of you at home. In 2019, we welcomed a new host, and a so new set. Thanks, Fran. Happy to be here. Yeah. But even with changes, Across the Fence remains Across the Fence. Across the Fence has become part of what Vermont is. It's like Tunbridge Fair or Bennington Battle Day. It's become ingrained in what we are. And why did that happen? Well, I have maybe a unique perspective on it. Uh, 60 years ago, I was a teenager. And my father uh, was working in a store in Woodstock, and he came home for lunch every day. He had a lunch hour. And it, at that time, most people lived within walking distance of their workplace. And we had recently gotten a television set, so uh, we were all fascinated by it. So he'd walk in the house, and if it wasn't on, he'd turn it on, and lo and behold, what was on the television? Across the fence. And it became a habit. And it became a habit, I suspect, in thousands and thousands and thousands of Vermont households because it is, it has become a Vermont essential. There have been lots of changes in 65 years of television, from black and white to color, now high definition. And WCAX, which was started by the Martin family of Jericho, is now owned by a new family. Jay Barton is the station's vice president and general manager. You know, I think Across the Fence is this beautiful encapsulation of hopefully what it means to be a Vermonter. And I think that that is one of the most important things that Channel 3 represents uh, internally and externally. As we change, there's not a whole lot we can do to stop time moving forward. So why don't we try and move with it, but at the same time stay true to who we are. And that's one of the things that I love about Across the Fence. For 65 years, Across the Fence has stayed true to its extension mission, to help improve the lives of Vermonters through educational programs and practical information. When we work with kids that are this young, preschool kids, this is an introduction to them to STEM. 
Okay, so you've got the science, the math, that hopefully, with young kids, will keep them involved in science. Well, we like to come out to the fair and we set up displays to talk to the general public and farmers about agriculture. We have a crop exhibit and we have an exhibit about rainfall simulators and stream tables and just putting some crops out there so that people can come talk to us about hay and corn, soybeans, wheat, how agricultural production happens in Vermont. And we try to blend in a little bit of a discussion about environmental quality, about financial quality of farm life, and how they interact with the people who are not farmers. And you can see what happens as the planning dates. One of the most important reasons for conducting research at a land-grant university is to really answer the questions that are coming in from the community around you. And the reason we're doing this work in the first place is because of um, the farmers and the end users saying, look, we want to improve the quality of our agricultural product so that we can have better markets, we can become more viable, and the end users are happy as well. UVM Extension and Channel 3 have worked together on this program now for 65 years, but without you, our viewers, there'd be no program at all. So for all of us involved in the nation's longest running, locally produced program, thank you very much for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.